Hey everyone, today I'll be showing you how to turn photos into manga backgrounds using Clip Studio. We'll start off easy and turn this picture of clouds into a background. I think this is a pretty simple exercise as usually there's no line art to extract in the photo so you can repeat this for many sky backgrounds to save a lot of time while making really realistic backgrounds as well. This technique first involves getting a picture, preferably one with even lighting, and clicking the tone button which is the third button on the right and it'll turn everything into a black and white tone. Clip Studio is really great for getting shortcuts to a variety of tones, so you can experiment with different patterns. I started out with the lion pattern, but let's switch to the noise one. It gives you kind of a chaotic feel and looks like stippling. You can then play around with the tone by changing the angle to see if it captures the image according to your preference. Let's switch to the circle pattern. For some patterns, you can change the frequency of the pattern. High, higher frequency values make the pattern smaller and more packed together, giving a smoother, realistic look, while lower frequency values make the circles bigger with a more stylized look. I'll go in the middle and set it to 40 and then play around with the angles until it speaks to me. Upon first look at the tones, it looks like there's different gradients of gray, but this is all black and white using different densities and frequencies of the patterns to achieve different values. I personally love this technique because it gives you a tone that looks really realistic at the click of a button. And with that, I think I like the line pattern the best, so let's switch back to that. A lot of people think this is cheating and you should draw your own clouds, but I believe if you can capture a picture that better helps you express something more effectively than another technique, then you should definitely go for it. So you can either stop here if you're satisfied or you can touch up the background a little bit more. Personally, I want the background to pop a little bit more because it looks too gray. So I'm going to add more white using the tone scraping brush to maintain that cloud look while adding more white negative space. Then I'll use a regular brush and just add some bolder white highlights as I'm trying to have my light source coming from the top right to indicate some type of sun. Let me toggle the background with or without the extra highlighting and you be the judge which one looks better. So now that I have the background, I can quickly draw my character over the background. I'll skip through that step and go over character drawing in another video. I was first going for my character to go skydiving but ended up settling for the character flying towards you using some foreshortening. I'm going to further develop that effect of the character coming towards you with some black focus lines coming inward and then using white lines coming outwards later. That last touch really helps the picture pop and shine a little brighter to wrap up the picture. A big inspiration for this technique comes from a mangaka named Inyo Asano, who is known for his work Oyasumi Pun Pun. It's a really emotionally gripping story that I would recommend for more mature audiences. Looking specifically at his art, I would love how his backgrounds are so realistic and later found that he would take pictures of many of his backgrounds, extract the lines and tones digitally, then reprint the image to add line art to add characters. I admire Asano's work especially for being able to interweave his line art seamlessly with mixed media and photography. With his unique art style, it's easy to relate to the main character and it really makes you emotionally invested in his story. The backgrounds add that feeling where it takes you into another world because it just feels so real. One takeaway I got from him is that you can make your comic unique by exploring different environments, taking pictures of the same place from a different angle so that you can use unique backgrounds that is consistent within one comic or manga scene. This is really versatile and you can take pictures of your bedroom or go out on a hike and take pictures of nature. But for any comic artist, using reference, even for mundane objects or environments that you think you have in your head is important for establishing that world for your reader. Moving on to a more challenging background, we'll try to turn this bedroom into a background by not just extracting just the tone, but also the line art. To do this, you want to right click on the layer with the photo and click LT Conversion of Layer. Afterwards, it'll take you to a screen where you can toggle some variables. 
Increasing the threshold will increase the crispness of the lines from where the lines are extracted. You can also change the directions from where it captures the image to your preference. Then finally, you can change the density of the tones it'll pick up with three different buckets to capture different shades in the photo. I like to keep my tones very distinct, so I recommend having a difference of about 25 to 30 in the density values, but you can also play with it as you see fit. When I'm happy with the settings and the tone patterns, I click OK and will bam. You have a rendered photo in black and white, but it still doesn't look like a drawing, so let's unpack the three different tone layers down to the, only the lines extracted. I'll first clean up the outline of any noise to make the initial lines as crisp as possible and then add my own line art to stylize it. When making backgrounds, it's good to have a basic grasp of perspective, something I've been trying to work on myself. This room looks like it could be captured with two point perspective, so I'm trying to understand the picture to know where the points of perspective are to guide my line art later. In Clip Studio, there's also a perspective guideline to help you, but sometimes I think it makes the photo too stiff, so I use it to understand the background and then move on to freehand. After I get a basic understanding of where the focus lines are, I'm ready to start defining the line art more so I go through and add outlines of the objects from the photo based on the points of focus I've found. Toggling back to the original colored picture, I can get a better idea of the basic shapes of the image. Starting off with the wooden planks on the floor, I try to use my own art style instead of outlining each and every plank. I think it'll look more like a drawing if you leave some lines open to the viewer's imagination. Next, I move on to define the outline of the bed and start adding lines based on my second point of focus. After having an outline of all the basic shapes in the picture, I can now start taking artistic liberties and drawing in the folds using the original photo as guidelines. I had some trouble trying to find that balance and tracing the creases to understanding the shape as a whole, so hopefully I can improve that moving forward. I then move on to the curtains and putting those same crease and fold lines. I definitely need to study how to make more believable crease lines. It looks like I could decrease the line width, but for now I'm just trying to get the outline in. As an artist, you're never going to get it perfect the first time. I think you just need to keep experimenting until you have something you like. Now let's toggle back to just the line art to see how it is. Once you get a base outline of the photo, you can remain on just the line art and start developing the details with more liberty. I think the bed looks too rigid and needs to be a little bit more plump with sheets on top, so I'll erase some of the straight lines that indicate the edge of the bed. Toggling back and forth, I keep checking if I have all the objects and add the lamp and erase any excess noise from the image. Looking at the three layers, I want to have more white negative space to have the image contrast and pop more with the line art. So I decide to take out the lightest layer at a frequency value of 30. This will make it look more like a drawing than a photograph. Next, I add the small details freehand on the remote control on the table. When you extract the line from the photograph, many times it doesn't get all the tiny crisp details, so it's the artist's job to define those. Building 
up even more detail, I add hatching to develop a wood grain texture on the table. Unlike using digital tone patterns to make this effect, this manual way of adding texture looks more organic and adds more character to the art. There will be an upcoming video on different textures you can make with black and white and line art. So now I'm mostly satisfied with the line art. Now I'm just going back on the tones and erasing to make lighting highlights, especially on the TV. I want to make the shadows look more organic and manual, so I also erase some tones in a line texture to make it look more hand-drawn and also to indicate lines that go towards the point of focus on the background. After I finish the initial background, I can add my character. I plop it as a layer right on top of the background, but the character line art also needs to mesh well with the background, so now I need to make adjustments to the background line art to fit the character's presence. Here I'm putting more wrinkles from where the character is sitting on the bed. I think it's helpful to observe reference of how sheets fold on top of a bed when, some is, when someone is sitting directly on top of it, but I mostly did this freehand. The points of contact are where the character is seated and where her foot is resting. After adding more creases, I also erase some of the old creases that don't fit with the overall shape of the crease patterns. After some finishing touches, you're done. After this exercise, here are some key takeaways that I use in my everyday art. First, contrast and values is important in making black and white art. You can use a gradient of tones to add more depth and realism, but to make the lion art stand out, you need to have noticeable differences in values by changing the density of the tones and adding more negative white space. Second, outline your basic shapes to break the photo down and understand the perspective and focus points to guide your line art. Third, use references to ground your art in realism to make them believable to the viewer. When using this technique, find a balance between tracing and adding your own style to the picture. Anyone can convert these backgrounds digitally, but mixing in analog methods of manual drawing into digital techniques gives your art that unique character. And with that, we wrap up our video. If you found this content helpful, please consider leaving a thumbs up below and subscribing if you want to watch more content on creating comics and manga. If you want to follow my other social media pages and work, the links are in the description. Finally, if you have any suggestions for future videos you'd like to see, please feel free to comment below. I'll see you guys next time.